You probably know the story of the Apostle Peter, a disciple of the Lord Jesus, when he denied knowing him three times. When Jesus was arrested, Peter was there watching what the guards and the religious ones were doing to Jesus, mixed in the crowd. Then when someone recognized him, he would say, no, I don't know this man. No, I don't know him. I have nothing to do with him. Three times he denied the Lord Jesus. Many know this story, but perhaps not from the point of view that you will know now. The text says that before the Lord Jesus, before the Lord Jesus was arrested and Peter denying that he knew him for three times, Jesus had this conversation with Peter saying the following, Simon, Simon, Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. You see that the devil had a particular interest in Peter, a special one. He wanted to sift him. Of course, a soul is a soul for God and the devil. Each soul is precious, but some souls represent many souls. And Peter indeed represented many souls because he was one of the main disciples. And Satan wanted to overthrow Peter. And Jesus said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny three times that you know me. So, what happened when Peter denied that knew Jesus for three times and then the rooster crowd? In reality, Peter discovered who didn't know someone was not him who didn't know Jesus, but he did not know himself. Peter didn't know himself. And it was needed to go through that great embarrassment because a great embarrassment, you can imagine, at one point you say, no, I'm ready to go to prison and death is needed. And afterwards, you even deny that you know Jesus. You can imagine the reality shock that Peter had with himself because he knew Jesus, that he knew, but who he didn't know was himself. He didn't know himself. He had a wrong, twisted idea about himself. He thought, spiritually speaking, per se, he was a superman, he was ready for everything, but he failed right at the first test. And this is a great lesson for me, for you, for all, because I have been seeing many behaving like Peter, many who in the heat of the moment say beautiful words. I love Jesus. Jesus is everything for me. I will never abandon Jesus. I want to serve Jesus to death. I will never look back. I will never backslide, turn neither to the left nor to the right. People say in the heat of the moment what they would like to be true, what they would like to do, if they were in that position. But they don't know that they have a wrong idea of themselves. They are relying on their own understanding. 
on their own structure. And the word of God warns us there in Proverbs about this. It says, Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In other words, do not rely on, do not lean your feet on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Which means, the warning is clear. We tend to rely on ourselves, to be wise on our own eyes. We have the inclination to think that we are stronger than we really are. Do you know, the person never thinks like this. I will fall in adultery. The adulterer, when he, well, when she got married, they never thought, one day I will betray my wife, my husband. Actually, many adulterers, before committing adultery, they would speak bad about those who betrayed. They would say, this is not an excuse. They said that until one day, they found themselves in bed with another person. They thought they had a structure they didn't have. They were deceived by their own heart, deceived by their own understanding. That's why the text says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not to trust in you with all your heart. It's in the Lord. Because you lean on what you know, you lean on what you feel, and sometimes this self-confidence becomes excessive, which was the case of Peter. Because out of the twelve disciples, Peter was the one who stood out the most. There's no doubt, out of the twelve, he was the one who stood out the most in regards to courage, boldness. He was the one who said, if it's you, Lord, who's on the water, so tell me to walk through the sea, through the waters, and to meet you. And he left the boat, and he gave a few steps on the water. He was audacious. He was the one who drew the sword when they came to arrest Jesus, and he cut off the ear of the soldier. Some way, somehow, even though Peter denied that he knew Jesus, he was the only one who was in the midst of the people. The others had run away. Am I right? He was there in the midst of the people. But he had a excessive trust in himself. He trusted himself excessively. Please understand, self-confidence is very important. It's important for you to trust yourself for you to have self-confidence, for you to be sure about your decisions and choices. It's important, but not excessively, because the one who believes in themselves excessively too much, or even exclusively, they leave God on the side because they said, I can handle on my own. This person is an ideal candidate to be in this Peter's position of complete embarrassment and a reality shock when life hits them under the belt, showing them you are not all that you think you are. When life hits them under the belt, they will think, I was not all that what I thought I was. That's it. So Peter knew himself through that situation. It's important that you know yourself, that you humble yourself and put yourself in dependence on God, to trust in God. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Don't make your strength, your capacity, your intelligence, your help, your strength, because this will not work for you. You must lean on God. Your heart has to trust God and depend on Him. And always distrust your flesh. Always distrust yourself. 
Don't believe your fallen part that we all have. Every human being has a fallen, flawed part. An evil inheritance of Adam and Eve. The inheritance of sin. Do not trust in this part that is in you. And because of this part, you have to always put your trust in God. Look at Him. Attaching yourself to Him. Evaluating yourself. Correcting yourself. So that you do not go through tremendous embarrassment. Reaching the point of denying Jesus for your actions. Once in reality, what ha happened showed you. You don't know yourself. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.